Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers. I've got a book here from the Lloyd's List. It's a heavy book, 600 uh, pages long, very detailed index at the back. It's called Good Faith and Insurance Contracts. It's in a third edition. It's written by three people, Peter MacDonald Eggers, Simon Pickin and Patrick Foss, and it's part of the Insurance Law Library. As you'll see, it's very much a standard work in the sense of having paragraph numbers which are very useful to find particular places, footnotes in a lot of detail, and the book itself is a special book. I was taken by the title, funnily enough, when I looked at it, Good Faith and Insurance Contracts, because I went all the way back to the dawn of my legal studies when I thought of Uberi May for Day, and that's really where it kicked off. That's the Flickr review, and what I've got here is the title. And the title we've given it is Good Faith in Insurance Contracts, The Theory, The History and the Law, from the only book on the subject. Now, the position really is this. Good faith is at the heart of all insurance contracts. Otherwise, the concept of insurance would be unworkable. But what happens when good faith on either side is neither respected nor applied? Of course, we have our own mechanisms within the law of contract, and equity will step in, as you know. But this latest book from uh, the Lloyd's List, in the words of Lord Justice Ricks, explores with authority and verb, quote, the theoretical underpinnings and practical consequences of the concept of good faith. So therefore, it's the only book available that devotes itself exclusively to the subject of utmost good faith, which is particularly and certainly not exclusively applicable to marine insurance. As the civil law concepts discussed in this authoritative text have been incorporated into our common law, specifically contract, so marine insurance law impacts on all insurance contracts as well as commercial law generally. The book itself is somewhat of a gift, in my view, for lawyers specialising in marine insurance, or indeed any insurance, as well as their insurance clients, providing a unique statement of substantive law in the area. All three authors examine in detail the development of the duty of utmost good faith, from its origins, Lord Mansfield, all the way through from uh, Sir Mackenzie's uh, Chalmers uh, drafting of the Marine Insurance Act 1906, which is the codification, to the most latest developments. Um, in particular, need of attention, says uh, Mr. Justice Floor, is the fall in the forward is the fact that avoidance of the insurance contract is essentially the only remedy for breach, a blunt instrument if ever there was one. Now, the first two editions of this work established themselves as the definitive reference, and the new third edition, with the, the 19 chapters, about 600 pages, quite a heavy book, incorporates references to new case law, and it's a learned and authoritative text, structured for ease, effectively, um, certainly with its use, and the footnotes, I think, are particularly helpful. Um, they also outline and detail tables of contents, uh, which set out exactly what the book's about. It could, gives a useful um, list of cases and the legislation. And, of course, as I say, the index at the back is particularly um, helpful because it's a very detailed one. So, those of you who crave a wider yet more detailed and more a subtle understanding of the principles underpinning contract law in general, and insurance law in particular, would do well to read this book as a great investment on insurance rules for your business. So thank you very much to the three authors, Lloyd's List and Informer. Thanks. Bye-bye.